Sagittarius. Hello, Sagittarius. Welcome back to my channel. This is Skeleton Key Tarot, and this is a tarot card reading for Sagittarius. All Sagittarius placements, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Wherever you've got Sagittarius in your chart or in your life, there's something in this message for you. And as always, cross watchers are welcome here too. So let's begin. Messages for Sagittarius, please. I almost called you Aquarius. What does Sagittarius need to know? We've got two Aquarius cards that came out right away. We've got Mars and Venus in Aquarius. So you could have Mars and Venus in Aquarius in your chart, or you could be dealing with somebody who has these placements or one or the other. Um, I'm not liking the direction of this so far. What, what is going on with Sagittarius? Um, somebody is being emotionally kind of like, damn, someone's being kind of emotionally manipulative. They're gaslighting or they are blaming, shaming. They are trying to obfuscate the truth. They're being using appeal to emotions. So uh, yeah, with the devil being here as well, I mean, what does Sagittarius need to know about this emotionally manipulative, deceitful person who's doing, a, who's doing something forbidden? Uh, what? What is the justice? Okay, so the justice and the six of cups came out. It's like emotional balance, fantasy. Is somebody not balanced? They're, they're unbalanced in their mind because they're emotion. Okay, I don't want to say someone's delusional. What is, hold on, help me out here, spirit. What is the justice? Okay, so they might be. There is someone who is, has, is living in a fantasy. Someone lives in a kind of fantasy. And we have to talk about it. You're being told this, that there is, someone's ignoring reality. They're having a hard time making a decision or facing the truth. It's very difficult. So they live in a sort of fantasy land. I'm hearing La La Land. That's rude, but that's what I'm getting. So if this resonates for you, uh, then this is your message. So you're dealing with somebody that may be a Pisces, Scorpio, Libra, Capricorn, Aquarius, and they are obfuscating, they are ignoring reality, they are making things harder than it has to be, honestly. And I see that this is going to change, that this is not sustainable, that this situation must be balanced out and will be balanced out. And so I think what's going on behind the scenes is somebody needs to make a decision from a place of compassion or love or peace. Someone wants to live a peaceful life. Somebody does not want to have to carry the burden of this relationship or this situation or these lies or these transgressions. Um, I feel like somebody is coming out of this delusional or fantasy or confused, conflicted dream. This is disillusionment. This feels like someone's getting disillusioned that they are gonna see the truth clearly. They're going to have a breakthrough when it comes to this person with this relationship, this um, connection here, this addiction. Somebody could be addicted and getting clean. Somebody could be angry and dealing with anger management and making progress actually doing the right thing. I, I do see a, an increased gain or expansion of power or stability. So I see this is going in a good direction, whatever this is, like if you felt undermined, humiliated, you felt like this was out of your control, you were up against something that was bigger than you, that you were in a bad situation, there was some hateful energies around you, some really petty people. I see you making decisions for your own peace of mind. You may even ignore this person, block this person, but like, <sighs> all right, we're gonna get another spread because I don't know, I don't know. There's unanswered questions. Who is this person? Who is this person for Sagittarius? What is this? Who is this? We have a Cancer. Somebody that could have cancer in their chart. Four of Cups. Somebody that is bored. Someone that's unhappy. 
someone that is trying to be grateful for the good things that they do have in their life. They have a lot of good things going for them, but they're not happy. They're dissatisfied, something maybe missing, or they've just been in a rut. They've been stuck in a rut. They've been emotionally aloof or disinterested, distracted. They don't want to do this. There's something they don't really care about, and they're, they're just blah. Okay, what is Sagittarius? So Sagittarius, this could be a Leo that you're dealing with. What else? Or a Taurus that you're dealing with. Um, brooding, dark brooding energy, ruminating, ruminating on the past, worried about the future, uncertain about what they want to do. They're not interested in doing something, but they're getting an opportunity. I feel like somebody is overcoming their own inertia. And if you have Leo placements in your chart, you may want to look at that reading because they had a similar message about overcoming inertia. Um, they were climbing up out of their own pit of despair. So that could be relevant to you somehow. Because yeah, I see you. Okay, so the universe is giving you a chance. The universe is giving you an opportunity to create a better future for yourself. If you can close out this cycle, close it out. I just heard, um, let God change me. Let God change you. Interesting. Okay, yeah, let spirit change you. Let the universe change you. Change yourself. Like there's an opportunity here to change, to do better, to create a better future, to go in a good direction, to overcome this problem, to create a new plateau interesting to create a new plateau in your life to get to a new level in your life you may have seen some signs and synchronicities or you've gotten some premonition about this you may have had a dream about this or this is something it's something new and interesting and could lead you to manifesting a better position or a new house i feel like you're hitting a finish line Okay, there's Venus and Aries. If you have Aries placements, I'd check that out. More Aquarius here as well. And this is the Wheel of Fortune, Sagittarius. This is Jupiter. It's your planet. It's you and Pisces share this planet. So Jupiter is here. It's growth, expansion. It's prosperity. It's like... This is something to celebrate. Celebrating some kind of personal milestone here. You get really good at this thing, this almost right away. I feel like you're really good at what you're doing. You're getting a chance to do something you really like or that you're really good at. We've got the Hierophant here and the Seven of Swords. There's no, somebody's cutting corners. There's no um, cutting corners in this. There's no shortcut. I feel like somebody may try to take a shortcut to prosperity, get rich quick scheme temperance there you're being advised to be to be patient with this don't try to cut corners you're going to establish your ten of pentacles you're going to get this money right five of pentacles here no good coming out with the ten of pentacles that's great you're, so you are you're manifesting this better positive future for yourself long-term stability financial stability wealth prosperity you may be graduating from school, graduating, getting a promotion. Again, I think you're being advised not to try to take any shortcuts, okay? Yeah, because that could possibly set you back. I don't know what that means for you. Don't cheat on your test. You'll get caught. Or don't try, don't try to do some kind of a crime. Just like do what you know needs to be done or something. I don't know. It, it depends on what you're dealing with. Nine of Swords. Someone's really worried about the long term. There's, they're right now thinking over and over, like thinking very, very heavily. It's really disturbing their sleep even. It, it depends on how hard this is hitting you, this energy. It's a general reading for Sagittarius if you'd like personal details. If you do a personal reading, you can email me for that. But it's like, there's a lot of anxiety about the future. There's a lot of anxiety about money. Like, where is this going? How am I gonna make it happen? And you may have negative expectations. You may feel very frustrated. You may feel like you have to 
lie, cheat, and steal to get ahead, and you're being told that no, you don't have to do that. You're getting this opportunity, and if you would just follow through with the opportunity, what you are creating it is benefiting you and it's benefiting everybody else in your life. Like you are creating a better path forward for yourself. You are creating a much more stable future. There's something that you're learning. You're learning the lesson. Feel it very deeply. Don't try to skip these lessons. Don't try to skip any kind of, um, it's like you want to skip one of the steps in the process, but you're being advised not to skip any of the steps in the process. Take it one step at a time. Keep an open mind. Keep a beginner's mindset. Because maybe you want to do it a certain kind of way that you think is the right way to do it, but you're going to have to go back to the drawing board. So learning from your mistakes, it's not a failure. It's just a lesson learned. Now you can see better what you need to do in the future. Like if you made a mistake and you learned from it, that's not a failure. That's a success. Now use that knowledge into the future to gain momentum, to go in the direction you're supposed to go. When you learn what not to do, this helps you to learn what you should be doing. So now you've got a better idea of what you should do moving forward. That's it. Just keep it moving. Don't dwell on it too much. I feel like somebody gets a little in, in, in over their head or they're like, they get it all, all up in their head thinking too much, dwelling on things that didn't work out, successes that they didn't have. It's like, this humbles you, okay, you can be humble and you can be grateful for the opportunity to try again and you're getting another chance. You you get a second chance or you get another chance or every day is a new chance to try again. It's like maybe you have had to go back to the drawing board. Maybe you have had to spend some time in introspection, reviewing and assessing your progress. Maybe you feel like I should be further along by now. I feel like I'm connecting to somebody who feels like they should have more or they should be further along. And maybe that's true. I don't know. Everything in divine timing, though. Maybe you're comparing yourself to other people who are further along than you. But if that's not helping you, then maybe you should just focus on doing your work. Like put all that energy towards making it happen. All that energy that you're spending dwelling on the fact that it hasn't happened yet, you could be taking that energy and redirecting it towards making it happen. So don't think about how it hasn't happened yet. If, I mean, unless ass assessing it, if it's assessing it is helping you to get clear on what you need to do next, then fine. Assess, analyze what went wrong, learn from it, and keep it moving. But don't dwell on what didn't work out. Use that energy towards making it work in the future. You have another chance. You have... There's more. There's a new job. There's a new opportunity. There's there's more to your life that's in the future. You are destined to have this. You're destined to receive something. And you just don't see it yet. It's not as bad as you think. Something's not as bad as you think. It's not, it's not as bad as you think it is. Maybe you have a pretty good starting point. Like, you have a lot to be grateful for. Yeah. You have a lot of health. If you have your health, if you have another day to get up, you have a lot to be grateful for. I see something that's going to make you really happy if you are dedicated to making it work. Putting in the effort, learning what you need to learn, and applying your knowledge to the task at hand. You're on track to do this. You're going towards a better future. You have a better understanding. You have a deeper understanding. You have a higher perspective. It's like doing science, right? It's the scientific method. You make something, you have an experiment, you do an experiment in your life, you try something, try it out. If it doesn't work, try something else, try again. Yeah, if at first you don't succeed, try, try again. That's what this message is all about. I see someone getting back up. I see that you've been knocked down and you're getting back up. I see that you're gonna try again. I see that you're going back to the drawing board and you're gonna make it this time, you're gonna get it. You're, it's, you're gonna, you are going to hit a personal milestone in growth and achievement right here, and you're going to be celebrating a victory. It's hard won too, it's like a very hard won victory. This was difficult for you. This was, this was not easy for you to get back up again, but you did, and you kept getting back up until you hit that finish line. I see someone running a marathon, okay? And it's not about finishing first for you. For some people it is. For the champions and the world champions, finishing first place 
is a very big deal. But for 90% of marathon runners, just finishing at all is a big deal. Just finishing that, what is it, 26 miles? 26 miles? Even if you walk 26 miles, that's an achievement. Even if you come in last, you finished the race. That's huge. So whatever this is, this is huge for you. And it's not fair to compare it to other people. It's not even about that. You know, you want to have good sportsmanship. Don't, don't compare yourself to other athletes, right? Compare yourself to your own personal best. You did it. You, you completed this. And it, it's amazing. Like, I'm so proud of you. You should be so proud of yourself for doing this. You made it. You made it happen. I feel like somebody succeeds and it's not good enough. Like, you want more. You want better. You want to do better. And I think that's admirable because it makes you want to try again. It's like you get a score and then you want to get the high score and then you want to break your own personal record. So like, I feel like somebody's never satisfied. You hit a point in your life and once you've achieved something, you're on to the next thing. Well, maybe take a minute. Okay, this reading might be saying take a minute to appreciate all the success that you have had. Maybe where you're at now was only a dream to you five years ago. You are now at the place where you wanted to be five years ago. That's beautiful. Give yourself a round of applause, right? Give yourself that recognition right now. Like, yeah, I did it. I'm here. Okay, so you're not happy. You're not at the finish line yet. You're not where you're going to be in five years from now, but you are in a good place to get there. Five years from now, you are going to make those, yeah, the dreams are going to come true. You're going to make those dreams come true that you have today. The dreams you have today are the reality of tomorrow in this reading today, Sagittarius. Your dreams today are your reality in five years, 10 years. Absolutely. Hard won victory. Don't try to cut corners. But you, you, you're getting it though. You're getting on the track. You're getting on the right path. You're getting into alignment with what you're manifesting. You're taking action. You're creating the circumstances that make this manifestation inevitable because you're putting in the work. It's about what you value. It's about your lifestyle. It's how you live. It's why you do what you do. It's consciously creating a secure financial future foundation to build your legacy on right here. Something about it is risky, okay? Yeah, you have to accept a certain amount of risk you, maybe you want to be strategic about this, right? It's not a bad thing to be seven of swords, very strategic. If it's the fool card. So I'm seeing something that's the fool. It's like kind of risky. It's adventurous. It's new. It's, um, you may need to read a book. You may need to study a book, study something, stu do some classes, maybe some online classes for this. Okay. Anything else for Sagittarius today? I want to get you a liminal spaces oracle. What have we got on the clock? 1802. That's nice. 1802 is nice. 1803 is nice. Um, let's get one liminal space oracle for my Sagittarius today, please. Try, try again. So two came out. We have infinity mirror and we have believe nothing that you hear and only half of what you see. Interesting. We're going to read from the book for these two. We'll start with Infinity Mirror. So if that's interesting to you, stay tuned. We'll read from the book Infinity Mirror. This is a short one. It says, it says, a glimpse into the multiverse through a serendipitous alignment of quotidian objects. That's the signs and synchronicities in the Four of Cups. So you're getting a glimpse into this future timeline here. This is your glimpse into the multiverse. It's almost like you have a choice between universes, you know, multiverses. This is serendipity. This is like a specific premonition, a sign that is a meaningful coincidence that is personal to you. This is a glimpse into the multiverse. This is a glimpse into what's possible. So we have the other card. It was um, believe nothing that you hear and only half of what you see. Okay, let's read for that. What's that say to us? It says, yeah, there's a little longer one, but okay. It says, it's beneficial to remain aware of the astonishing subjectivity of perception 
for consciousness is formed by countless experiences and conditions unique to the individual. Yeah, your unique set of circumstances. Something specific to you. What you are hearing and seeing, telling and being told, are spiked with the self-deception that is inherent to the human condition. Didn't we have the first message here today was something about being self-deceptive, delusional? We were saying that person was delusional. Maybe it's a better way to put it is like self-deceptive. There's this fantasy, that la-la land we were talking about before. It's being called to your attention again. And I feel like that's the Seven of Swords as well as the Five of Pentacles. This ruminating, this brooding, this getting caught up on what's not necessarily true. It's not as bad as you think it is. The failure is not fatal. It's a lesson learned. It's a new opportunity to do better next time. It's actually success. This is not failure at all. It's a success because you learned from it because now you're, you're going on the right track. You learned what doesn't work so that you could learn what does work. So your perception here, your unique individual perception of the situation is being called to your attention because it's really important. So what is deceptive about this? Self-deception is inherent to the human condition. We all do it sometimes. Nothing to be ashamed of, but it is something to be addressed, right? Let's continue. A map is not the same as the territory it represents, nor is your perception of the truth necessarily true. So something about your perception of the truth is not necessarily true. It's not as bad as you think it is. Words are symbols that fail to fully grasp the nature of reality. Yeah, words are always secondhand, right? Reality itself is a fragile and subjective operating system. If language can serve only as a pale construct of a reality that eludes us, both concepts must be understood to be imperfect. So what are you left with now? This is a tonic for the anxious mind to not believe every thought that passes through. Do not believe everything that you think because not everything that you think is true. There's something that you may be thinking that's not true and you're being told. Don't believe everything that you think. Believe nothing you hear and only half of what you think. Don't believe, you know, yeah, only half of what you see. A tonic for the anxious mind to not believe every thought that passes through. I love that for you. I feel like that goes right with everything that we were saying today. That dark and ruminating, that anxious, worried about the future, that part of you that thinks that you're not good enough or that you failed or that it's not happening or whatever, that's not true. Reality is not the way that you think it is. This, this is self-deceptive. It's negative self-deception. You're lying to yourself or that negative voice within you, that eight of swords we saw earlier. It's right there. You're healing from this. You're healing this part of yourself. Patience, kindness, grace, giving yourself grace, giving yourself forgiveness and love. We're, we all do it. We're all human. Sometimes we have these moments of self-deception. Call it what you will. But I feel like someone is getting liberated from this. Gaining more information, gaining access to more resources, more information, a better mindset. It's not as bad as you think it is. It's better than you think. It's going to be better than you think it will be. So the bottom of the deck is the next right thing. What's the next right thing for you to do? That's the question. What is the next right thing for you to do? You may have to let something go. Let's read the next right thing. I just feel like it. If you like this, leave a like. Let me know. But I just, I just feel called. So the next right thing is rather short. It says, it may not be easy, but in this case, it's simple. The next right thing will require no justification or deception. It will cause no harm. Follow its light to the high road and take that all the way down to Miracle Mile. Wow. So the next right thing you need to do is not going to be self-deceptive at all. There'll be nothing harmful or deceptive. It requires no justification. You won't have to explain it. You won't have to apologize for it. It's self. Oh my gosh. Okay. Sorry. There's a car going by. It's self-evident. The next right thing to do, if you think about it, if you contemplate this, spend some time in contemplation, thinking about this opportunity that's coming your way. The next right thing to do, it might not be easy, but it's simple. It requires no justification or deception, no self-deception either. Perhaps it requires that you stop deceiving yourself or stop lying to yourself, putting yourself down. I feel like someone's got some negative self-talk and it's time to address that. Perhaps it's important to, I don't know, 
do some uh, do some therapy. Yeah, find some methods, some tools for redirecting that mental focus towards winning instead of dwelling on what you perceive to be a loss. It's a perceived failure. It's not really a failure. You just perceive it that way because you feel bad. You feel bad about it. You feel bad about not living up to your own expectations. You didn't get what you wanted exactly or you didn't, you know, it didn't happen the way that you wanted to. It's okay. We're going to keep it moving to the next right thing. It'll cause no harm. No deception needs no justification. Follow the light to the high road and take it all the way down to Miracle Mile. That's beautiful. That's what I see you doing. I see you on the path, making it happen. Miracles really do occur. You're very lucky, Sagittarius. That's what I've got for you today, Sagittarius. Showing up in your own reading, in your own power. I hope this was helpful. I hope it was of service to you. If you enjoyed this and you'd like a personal reading, my email's in the description box below. You can email me. I'll let you know how it works. You let me know what you need. But in any case, I just want to say thank you so much for joining me today. And I'll see you in the next one, okay? Bye-bye.